Hey guys, what's up? How's it going? I've got another over the board game report. Um, so I won my my last game against a, a young kid. Uh, I'd lost my previous three. This is for I'm playing for Chesterfield Chess Club C team, and our opponents are Sheffield Def A team. Uh, really, really fascinating. So um, everyone on on the team was uh, hearing impaired. Um, one of their players, I think on board three, or, or might have been five, I'm not sure, um, was also visually impaired and couldn't see the board. So he had a touch board, right? Um, and his opponent had another board where he made the moves. And they spoke the moves out and he was feeling, feeling the pieces to see what... They've... I've never seen that before in my life. Um, quite an experience. Anyway, so my opponent, Howard, lovely guy, uh, deaf as a post, a uh, little bit older than me, and um, let me take you through the game. So I, I've got the, the black pieces yet again, and uh, oh, you have d4 again. Um, so what do you do, right? So I play e5. Uh, and I, I've, so I've got the I've got the Lee Chess analysis here. Apparently, this is a blunder already, according to Lee Chess. The England Gambit is a blunder on move one. He takes, and I push. So obviously, I'm going for the the Charlik or the Hartlaub Charlik Gambit. Um, now, opponent thinks for a while. Now, on here, so I've not only written down the moves, but I've also written down some of the timing. So we 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 have 75 minutes each. And at each 15-minute uh, chunk, I, I marked down where we got to. So he took, he played eight moves in his first 15 minutes, right? I played 13 in my first 15 minutes. But then I, mm, I don't know. Did I know what I was doing a bit more? I don't know. But anyway, so he took the first pawn. I pushed d6, and he, he has a think, and he declines it with bishop f4. Um, apparently, it's saying knight f3 was the best move here, but I mean, we're talking margins, so uh, you could, yeah, you can see the eval as well on the side here. So, you know, white's doing a little better now. Um, okay. So, I'm thinking, okay, if he takes here, takes, he's, he's got, he's actually got three attackers on there. Uh, but there's not really much I can do about that. I can't, I can't really add another defender apart from, I mean, that doesn't work. Pawn takes, queen take. No, it just doesn't work. The king king would be the second defender. It doesn't work against three attackers, right? You always have to think the king can only be the final defender, the final one to capture. So I play knight to c6. And I'm thinking here my opponent probably should take. Well, actually, no, I've, I've got three defenders. Three defenders, three attackers. So again, he has another think. Um, develops his knight to f3, makes a lot of sense. And I decide to come out and, and hit the knight. So I'm playing moves. I'm hoping that we can transpose into something that I kind of recognize and castle, yeah? Um, but this bishop on here is, is a bit of a pain, so I'm not very hopeful that we're going to get the old Charlik trap with the discovery against the queen. Even more so now with knight b to d2. So he's defending his knight with a spare knight. And really, in the first kind of five or six moves, I already got this feeling. So, yeah, good think about this one as well. I really wasn't sure what to do. I didn't want to block in my bishop by putting my queen on e7. But yet, I wanted a castle quickly. I've given up a pawn now, right? And my normal attack probably isn't on. So, what do I have to do? Well, I have to develop quickly and try and get after my opponent a bit. Um, so, yeah, I play queen d7. He now pushes c3. And I'm thinking at this at this point that I'm already start, I'm trying to read my opponent. This is what is really quite fascinating. You get this online definitely. You get it a little bit more when you're face to face. And I'm getting the feeling about how long he's taking over these moves, right? So for his previous night move, he was up to six. So he, he'd spent seven minutes up to this point, right? And I'm, I'm, I'm getting the feeling that my opponent is striking me as timid. As in, he's more on the defensive side than the offensive side. And what's interesting is the fact that I've played a gambit that he's only semi-accepted. So he's, not, he, he's a pawn up. And um, 
it's striking me that he should be coming after me a bit more. Okay. So, long castles. Fairly, fairly obvious, right? I want to get my king safe. My knight's defending this right now. Um, his queen side castling options are, are slim. Right, now he comes after my bishop. Okay, now at some point I'll write a little smiley face. This is move 10, I'll write a smiley face. This is, or I'll move 7 now, okay? So I drop back. I did, I've did. i got other options. I could, have, I could have gone here or here. But I drop back. I'm kind of daring him to double kick with g4. Um, and he doesn't do that. He now plays his queen out to b3. Um, which apparently is, is a blunder according to the Lee Chess engine. Um, the machine says e3 was best, obviously releasing the bishop. So a queen move at this point. Now, he's not attacking this. There's no light squared bishop. The light squared bishop is trapped in. So what's the point of this? He, he's looking at there, but that's very well defended right now by queen and bishop. So I'm not sure. So here, I, um, I decide to push f7 to f6. Now, I did then notice that he has e6 hitting my queen, and I thought, have I really screwed up? And according to the engine, yes, Hunty, you, that was a Muppet move, because I was slightly up here, negative 0.8, and this is now plus 2.1 for white. So what he has to do now is force that e-pawn down my throat and make me swallow, yeah? He doesn't do it. He doesn't do it, so this is a blunder on his part. He then double kicked with g4, and that is not the right thing to do. Why? Because of bishop f7, right? Bishop f7, and now I've got a very minor advantage back. I'm hitting his queen. Um, so this is a tempo gaining move, and now e6 isn't possible because I can just take it and renew the attack on the queen. So he retreats then to c2, and um, now I play f e. Okay, so I have now regained my pawn, and we earn ourselves a smiley face. So at this point, I'm now starting to feel slightly more comfortable. Um, not according to the engine, though. You know, it's still very much drawn. But I like the fact I've now got these two central pawns. White does not have any control really. It's got one pawn here, right? Looking at the center, knight there, knight there. So, it, and the bishop really isn't. So, uh, and the queen, I guess, is looking at this square. So, we've got control over two squares in the center, right? Um, but I've got a nice pawn chain. I've got my king castled already. And I really think that, you know, this was a probably a key moment where he really did need to shove that pawn down my throat. But we do tend to be cagey. We tend to play in a more cagey fashion when it's a 75 minute game. I think sometimes I play simply worse in a 75 minute game than I do sometimes in a five, a five minute blitz. Five minute blitz, I'm playing a bit more freely, a bit more fluently. Okay, so anyway, Bishop has to retreat, off he goes. Okay, now I decide, because I'm thinking, well, this Bishop's blooming awful here. This, this, guy, this guy at least has prospects in the game, yeah? But this dark square bishop, where's it going to go? I put it here. He doesn't want to go there. And here or here, he could be et by a knight. And, and here it's attacked twice. Right? So, you know, I'm thinking, what am I going to do? So I decide to kind of, well, let's think about fear and kettering the bishop. Or h5. So that move kind of achieves both ends. Um, Now, at some point, Eddie, Eddie may advance up the board. Pawns have a habit of moving forwards up the board, right? They shouldn't do it too freely, um, but, you know, Eddie might move, and, and it's okay to have a bishop installed as a, a kind of a, a silent sniper ready to take part later on. It's not a problem. You don't have to use every piece all at once. And opponent now, long castles, giving away a bit of an advantage. This light square bishop is still undeveloped. Right, so uh, now, obviously, there's a hanging pawn, but obviously you can't take it, right? Because now, obviously, if you know, bishop takes pawn, then that simply traps the bishop. And yeah, we could take, we could get a second pawn for our trouble, but really, after knight takes, I don't know, 
at this point in time what it's saying yeah black's slightly better still um but uh, okay so i play knight f6 first i'm thinking i've got an, a, a decent square there although it isn't a defended well it is actually defended by the light squared bishop right now um but yeah i just want to get my junk out really uh, bishop h6 is now playable pinning this knight on the king that might be a good idea might even come in here or here you know never know it's all about possibilities at this point king b1 is played and we're still very it's very tight game the the engine definitely preferred white for most of the moves up to this point but um white has now really given away his advantage so we are in a fighting mode and i'm quite happy that this bishop in particular is biting on granite as naroditsky says because he's staring down the barrel of a dark squared pawn chain. And this bishop, for now, is um, slumbering. All right. So, I play queen e6. It's a fairly obvious move. I'm threatening to come in here, force the king there. Um, at least I win a pawn and the, and the king's, you know, safety is compromised. Uh, they block. Now, um... We have tension between the ladies, okay? Never nice. And but you know my queen's defended by a bishop. Uh, Howard's queen is defended by knight and pawn. Uh, so I don't feel like I have to do anything right now. In fact, I think that if if queen takes, bishop takes, my bishop is improved, and his king side, you know, is is slightly weakened. So. There is a kitten sharpening its claws on a didgeridoo. There you go. So h5 now. h5, because I actually have two attackers on this pawn. Right, and the reason I have two attackers on this pawn is because he's thrown it up the board, you know, fairly casually, kind of into the path of my knight. And so h5, there you go. He brings his knight in to attack my queen. I actually give him an x-clam on this one. Uh, the, the engine disagrees. The engine thinks that there was there were better moves out there um but i like this move because he's okay it's a forcing move he's attacking my queen i can't come here um and if my queen should move then he's got two attackers on my bishop so i've got to do something right i uh, trade queens and now knight recaptures now obviously i have an issue my bishop is hanging What's more, I don't, I don't think I actually even notice this at this point. I, I notice it in a minute. Um, that that would also come with a, a fork on both rooks because I've long castled. When you long castle, your rooks end up on um, these colours. Yeah? And uh, they're both on dark squares in this case, or light squares if, if you're white. Um, so are vulnerable to a knight fork. The same is not true, I don't think, if you short castle. So if you shortcast, you end up with a rook there and a rook there. Ah, uh ah, -huh. uh -huh. true. Okay, so anyway, I decide to pull the trigger. All right, I want to mess up his pawns. Actually, so negative point seven here. Yeah, the computer doesn't like this move. It says bishop g eight was best. I should have just re retreated the bishop, kept the bishop pair for later on. Okay, but I'm thought. Look, let's muck up his pawns a bit. And now I am clear that there is a threat to the rook, so I play my rook up to d7. Now still, again, it slightly favours white in this position. I'm thinking my king's safety is slightly better. His bishops still are kind of kind of muted and blunted, but, you know, you never know. There could be some... Bishops have a, have a, a nasty habit of coming to life. Okay. Um, Howard now pushes uh, f3, which doesn't do this bishop any great favours, to be honest. It kind of overprotects his pawn, but, you know, there we go. But is it overprotect Is it protected? Pause if you need. Is this pawn protected? Counting attackers and defenders. Well, one, two attackers, one, two defenders. But this guy here, he ain't a defender. Because if he captures, look because this bishop is still not developed 
That rook is undefended because he hasn't completed development. Right, where are we? Move 18. Dude's not completed development. Nor have I, by the way. I've, st I've also got my queen's bishop. Sorry, my king's bishop stuck there on the back rank. So that's not too clever. Anyway, so I take... And he realizes he, he just can't recapture. If, if, if pawn takes here, knight takes. I'm going to dive in attacking stuff. Pretty simple tactic, really. So he comes there, I take again. And now bishop takes, okay? So we are up a pawn. We find ourselves up a pawn. But finally, the LSB has come to life. Right? Plus, I don't like this very much. I don't like the idea of him taking my knight and being forced to recapture with a b-pawn, right? Isolating Andy. And I'm thinking, well, well my king is going to have to end up there. But, you know, another issue that I see is this potential alignment on the king and the rook. So we do not like this. We do not like this one little bit. Bishop h6 now, right? My bishop's stuck behind its own pawn wall. So the only way out is going to be either this way, and there's a stupid horse in the way, or this way, which is kind of okay, because at least it comes with some kind of force. We're attacking the knight. Knight moves out to here. I decide to trade off. I'm a pawn up, after all. Okay, and now suddenly it's like these, these evil twins are, you know, really starting to look a bit more sprightly. But look again, and look, think pawn structure. This pawn structure is not nice at all, Precious, right? On the other hand, black has quite a nice little wall, and I very often like to end up with pawn structures like this. Um, and I, I bottle this. I, I do not want to. I do not want to allow him, even though he's giving up the bishop pair, right? And even though he's giving up his best bishop, because obviously with this pawn wall here, this guy is a bit compromised. But I, I just don't want to. I don't want to lose my king safety. So the knight is going to pivot round. Okay. So what am I thinking at this point? Oh, the other advantage of this move, by the way, is it defends that pawn. Okay, so he now pushes h4, and I just, you know, I yeah, I know that the pawn is preventing this pin on the on the rook, which would win the rook, and also the knight. I just thinking to myself, I just feel safer behind this wall of pawns. Okay. And it said inaccurate. It said apparently knight f7 was the best move. And I think I did consider knight f7. He can't really take. Because then I unisolate Gary, right? And end up with a very nice, you know, pair of doubled pawns here. Well, not doubled, but, you know, good control over this part of the board anyway. Um, so, yeah, I did consider that move. I just wanted to get my king out of there. Um, and, okay, so rook, um, what is it, rook d to f1 and i'm thinking i'm still up a pawn right and also so where are we now we're, we're move 24 right so he went down to 45 minutes on after on move 19 when he played move 19 he was under 45 minutes right um i'm still quite a way off 45 i've still got quite a bit more uh so and I'm thinking now at this point, I, I'm up for an endgame here. You know, I bring it. Let let's do this. I will I will take this all the way down to the wire because I'm about 15 minutes up on the clock compared to this guy. So Howard, how do you fancy trading rooks? No, Hunty, I do not fancy that one little bit. Okay, well I'm like, I do, right? You want the F file? You're gonna have to work for it, mate. Okay, so Bishop recaptures. And we find ourselves in a situation where black has one decent pawn structure on the queen side and a solo here on g5. Um, white has a bit of a fugly lump there and two solos. On the other hand, white has the bishop pair and black has one bishop and one knight. So here, I, I think this is kind of key. Okay, so again, zero, zero, zero. We are bang equal, guys. Bang equal still at this point. And I decide d5. And that's... It's not a very me move, that, somehow. But here's what I'm thinking, right? I'm thinking... I've got a dark squared bishop, right? Howard's got both. Howard has both bishops. So what can I do to 
reduce the any advantage of the light squared bishop and I'm thinking well also you know in a way my advantage is, is kind of this you know I have a two on one in the central two files yeah he has a c pawn that could take one out but I'm thinking let's now kind of think about switching our pawn a pawn chain from the dark complex to the light complex and we can do it with tempo so d d5 and he retreats and I, I wasn't convinced of this move engine says it's fine we're still all equal in negative 0.1 so black has the tiniest edge but whatever i push on e4 right and now i'm wanting to quarantine this guy right this guy took so long to get into the game he's only done a couple of things and now I, I'm, I'm saying, look, I'm going to block you out, but my bishop, my dark square bishop, and your dark square bishop, they're going to get, like, free reign because they can just pass through like ghosts, right? Pass through this light chain pawn more. Now he brings up his bishop, his, his rook, sorry, to h3. That pawn isn't even under attack, so I'm thinking, what's, what's he on about? He can't go here because I've got a pawn on it. Uh, is it this? I'm not sure. And it's dropped down a little bit, slight, slight inaccuracy. Um, and now I come in with my knight. So what I'm thinking now is, let's pile the pressure on this, right? I could bring my rook over. So maybe my, my bishop's going to come round and somehow apply pressure. You know, I, I'm not quite sure, but um, I think I feel like if I can eliminate this pawn, then this guy as a passer suddenly becomes quite a uh, an asset. So, um, and now e3 okay so where are we we move 29 yeah from move 28 I wrote down he sped up he seems to speed up he's down to he's under 30 minutes now okay and I'm I still got 45 minutes at this point so after I make my next move which is c6 I've still got 45 minutes on my clock all right, he's down to 20-something. 20, 20 so, um, yeah, he starts to rush his moves a little bit at this point. He plays b4, okay? It's now negative 1.6. So, although material is... Is it? No, I'm, I am a pawn up. And it counts. And here, quite, I'm quite pleased with this move. It seems a bit kooky, right? I'm creating a backwards pawn here. But I'm thinking my king could like snuggle up in this corner. It can handle the A pawn, the B pawn, the C pawn. These pawns are protected. I should be all right. And I'm figuring it's just time to like batten down the hatches and see it through and try and play grown up chess and wait for my opponent to make a mistake. His king starts to move into the action. King B7, king to D1, king B6. Okay. Uh, now his king comes up again, and you can see that the the engine is disapproving of this. You know, black black's position is just getting steadily better with this move. So, actually, said king e1 was best because the king here now. I mean, what this bishop's got nothing now. This bishop now is is may as well not be on the board. Okay, so now. <laughs> I, I really do fiddle around a little. And now, also, I confess, I'm trying to play my moves quite quickly because I, I'm, I'm wanting to put the pressure back on him. It's a bit of a bad habit of mine over the board, I know. But, you know, I've played too much Rapid and Blitz. Okay. He moves his bishop back to e1. And that's definitely inaccurate. A uh, mistake, it's saying, right? It's saying bishop d1 was best. Um, so he's fiddling with his bishop as well so to speak. I put my bishop now here, and I don't know why I, why I did it. I, anyway, because it's now in the way of the rook. So there, there, there. My rook needs to come to h7. And actually, um, according to the engine, this is a blunder, and rook h7 should have been played first, obviously. Okay. Now his bishop goes back there, and then I'm thinking again, oh, okay, I should put my bishop on f6, and there he goes. Okay. So, and he moves his bishop back. It's like dudes run out of ideas, okay? Rook h7 now. I'm negative 3.9, according to the engine. This is now a winning position. 
So obviously I've now got an overwhelm on this pawn. I've got one, two, three attackers. He's only got two defenders. What does he do? That doesn't really help. I just take it anyway. Okay. He's got nothing attacking. He's left his, you know, light squared bishop on the bench. He's only got one attacker. I've got one defender. That's all I need. His king now moves out of the way. Okay. I push the pawn up which, yes, brings it into the line of fire with this bishop, but it also brings it under the protection of the, the mighty horse. And now his bishop wakes up again. It really is the, uh, the tail of the, of the very sleepy light squared bishop. Rook comes back to h2. Um, yeah, because I was starting to think about, you know, can my rook dive in here? But he's, he's got bishop e2 there. Um, rook comes back there. And now this is... Inaccurate. The computer didn't like this one. It says it's a mistake. Knight g3. Um, he takes. I take back with the pawn, um, which is okay, with tempo on the rook, and the rook now comes here. Okay. Now, the final move of the game actually is bishop e5. Bishop e5, I'm just tying the whole room together. Okay. Bishop defends the pawn, and what that means is. This guy is now free. He can come either side, really. But I was thinking he's going to come here and here. He's going to force the trade off. And that's that's going to be it, really. You know, one, two, three, four, five against... Yeah, I've got six pawns against his four. So I've got an extra pawn here, this guy. And I've got this runaway pawn as well. And at this point, you know, he realizes that something like this is coming. Or, or do it the other way around, you know, pin the rook which again forces it off the board and actually to there and and the bishop can't even defend because of, because of this pawn here yeah so tough one really interesting game so i i'd also put it into the um into the chess.com uh, analysis as well i think it said we both played kind of 1600 level ish but I, I was slightly better. According to, let's have a look at the, um, the Lee Chess thing. So you can see white is fine up to this point in the game, okay? Um, because this was a blunder on my part. And if he had pushed that pawn, he'd have been all right. But from this point now, scroll back down, he struggles to get his head above water. It's actually very, very even for a while. But I was pretty comfortable, and then there was this kind of steady collapse in the end game. According to um, according to Lee Chess, we made three blunders each. Um, in in Chess.com language, it said it's it called my blunders misses, but same thing. Um, it's got eighty one accuracy for Howard, eighty five for me. But you know, I will take it. I will take it. So uh, there you go. Uh, enjoyable game always good to get a win um i there is some definitely something i need to adapt to though with the over the board play i mean part of it is literally just seeing what's on the board because it's so much easier when it's flat and it's in 2d on the screen a lot easier to see simply to see what's going on um so for example i i kind of with this i I don't know. I I think I was thinking too much about my ideas, maybe, and not enough about about his. I was thinking, can I take? I don't know. I don't know. Take out. I don't know. But this would have been rather unpleasant, you know, because after here, I have to go. Oh, it's saying queen e8. So yeah, definitely, definitely difficult. But I'd already picked up on on this this feeling that my opponent was playing in a a timid and conservative manner. Um, so I'm not surprised he didn't do that, but I'm pleased that he didn't anyway. So this queen has to move. And that is really the start of, so where are we here? Yeah, so white really doesn't get any material, any solid advantage again from that point. Um, so throughout the middle game, it's all good. So it's calling this the start of the end game. That's interesting. So not when the queens come off. But hey, so there you go. Yeah, uh, thought I'd share that with you guys. Um, quite enjoyable. Hope you enjoyed it too. Thanks for watching. See you soon.